Hello everyone! Welcome to Grade 11 General Mathematics class. We are here in Module 1 and the topic is all about functions. Now let's start with the definition of terms. So we have here relation. When we say relation, it is any set of ordered pairs. The set of all first elements of the ordered pairs is called the domain of the relation. And the set of all second elements is called the range. Let's have here an example. We have here set G. Set G is a set of ordered pairs which are 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 2 and 4, and 5 and 6. Now, let us identify what are the set of all first element. So, first elements are 1. We have here 2. First element in this ordered pair is another 2. And the first element in this ordered pair is 5. So, therefore, the set of domain or the set of all first elements in the ordered pairs are 1, 2, 2, and 5. So they are called set of all first element or what we call the domain. Now let us identify what are the range. So range are the set of all second elements in the range. Now, let us identify. We go back to set G. 2 is the second element in this first ordered pair. 3 is the second element in the second ordered pair. 4 is the third, is the second element in the third ordered pair. And 6 is what we call also the second element in the fourth ordered pairs. So, therefore, the set of all second elements are 2, 3, 4, and 6. So, do you have any question? Can you now identify the domain and range if you are given the set of ordered pairs? Okay, I hope so. Next, we go to functions. Function is actually a special kind of relation. Okay, remember that. Function is a relation or rule of correspondence between two elements, the domain and range, such that each element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. A function also may be described by using set of ordered pairs, table of values, formula, and graph. So let's have an example of a function. So we have here set D. Set D is composed of ordered pairs, which are 0, 3. So we have 0, 3, 1 and 4, 2 and 5, and 3 and 6. Now, let us identify the domain in the given set D. So, if we're going to identify the domain, the set of domain, the set of the first elements are 0, 1, 2, and 3. So, as you can see, that there is no repetition done on, there was no repetition in the given set of ordered pairs. So each element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element on the range. Okay? Okay. To give you an idea, when we say a function, you just take a look at all the first element in the given set of ordered pairs. If there is no repetition in all the first element, so therefore, that is a function. Okay? 
Any question? Now we go to the next. So let's have here an example. You will be given ordered pairs and you're going to identify which relation are functions. So if the given relation is not a function, just identify it as it is not a function. Okay? But if the relation is a function, identify them as functions. So, we have here, set A. Set A are ordered pairs 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4, and 4 and 5. Okay? Before you're going to determine, before you can determine that the given relation is a function, you need to identify the domain. Or the set of first element. Now let us identify first elements are 1, 2, 3, and 4. They are called the set of first element and they are called the domain. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So is what can you say about this relation? Is this a function or not a function? As I told you earlier, that you can easily identify whether a given relation or a given set of ordered pairs is a function if, if the first element, if there is no repetition on the first element. So as you can see here, that there was no repetition at all on all the first element. So, therefore, this is a, okay, this is a function. Okay, do you have any question? Next, set B here. So, we have here, set B, ordered, set of ordered pairs are 3 and 3, 4 and 4, 5 and 5, and 6 and 6. So, first, you're going to identify the domain or the set of all first element. So, we have here 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, the domain and the given set of ordered pairs or relation are 3, 4, 5, and 6. After finding its domain, what can you say now? Is this a function or it is not a function? Okay, very good. That is a function. So, set A and set B are examples of a function. Next, we go to the next. So, we have here set C. First, we identify the domain or the set of all first element. First elements are 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. Okay, we write that as set the domain or the set of all first elements. So, we have 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. Okay, after identifying its domain, what can you say about this relation? Is this a function or it is not a function? Okay, that is not a function because there is first element here which is zero which is repeated on the fourth ordered pair. The first element in the fourth ordered pair is also zero. So they are the same. So therefore, that is not a function. Okay? We go to the next.
So we have here set D. So set D is composed of ordered pairs which are A, B, A, B, B, C, C, D, and A, D. Okay, we will identify what are the first elements. So we have here A, B, C, A, and A. Okay, so therefore, domain are A, B, C, and A. So therefore, set D, it is a function or it is not a function. Okay, that is not a function. Why? Because of the repetition of element, first element, A. There are two A's here. Okay, so do you have any question? It is easy to identify, right? Let's just take a look at all the first element or the domain. Take a look at the set of all first element or that domain. If there is no if there is a repetition, then therefore that is not anymore a function, okay? Okay. So let's have here another exercise which shows functions. So so we have here a table A, B, and C. So you just observe the first elements here are the values of x. This one. First elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So they are the domain. So therefore, after identifying the domain, what can you say now? Is this a function or it is not a function? Okay, this is a function because there was no repetition happened in the first element or in the value of x. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. There was no repetition at all. Next we go to B. So we have here table of values in letter B. So we have here 4, the domain are 4, negative 3, 1, 2, and 5. What can you say about them? Is there any repetition or there was no repetition? Okay, is this a function or not? Okay, so this is a function because as you observe, there was no repetition in the x value or in the first element. Next, we go to letter C. So x values are, or the domain are, 0, negative 1, 4, 2, and negative 1. So therefore, is this a function or it is not a function? Okay, this is not a function. Why? Because of this negative 1 here and another negative 1 in the x value. So this is not a function. So do you have any question? I hope. You can understand now, or you can identify now, which is a function or not, okay? Okay, next. We have here mapping diagram. Which do you think represents a function? Okay, so we have here mapping diagram A, B, and C. So we have here... This first circle, that is what we call the domain. So, they are set of first element. In the range here, the set of second element. 
So, take a look of this arrow. A is paired to X. Okay? And B is paired to Y. C is paired to Y also. So, what can you say about this mapping diagram in the first or in letter A? Is this a function or this is not a function? Okay, this is a function. Why? As you can see here, A, B, and C here in the domain is paired to X, B is 2Y, and C is 2Y also. There was no repetition then, or all of the first element here was used once. So that is, therefore, that is a function. Okay? Now we go to B. So we have here X. X is paired to A and B. So therefore, we have here X, A, and another pair x and b and also we have here y is paired also to b so what can you conclude on this is this a function or it is not a function okay this is not a function why because x here is paired to a and B. So, therefore, X here is repeated. Oh, it is used twice. Okay? So, it was used X paired to A and another X paired to B. Okay? So, this is not a function. Next, we go to the last mapping diagram. So, we have here Jana is paired to Ray, Maya is paired to Ken, and Donna is paired to Mark. What can you see? Is this mapping diagram in letter C a function or it is not a function? Okay, that is a function. Why? Because each element in the domain was paired to each element on the range. Jana is paired to Ray, Donna is paired to Mark, and Maya is paired to Ken. Okay? Each of them has its own partner. It was not rep repeated. Okay? They have their own individual partner. So that is an example of a function. Okay? So we go to the next. Now, after mapping diagram, we go to vertical line test. Okay, so when we say vertical line test, it is used to determine if a graph represents a function. If a vertical line is drawn to any part of the graph and intersects the graph in only in one and only one point, then the graph represents a function. Okay, let's take a look at this. So, using vertical line test, can you, can you identify the graph of a function? Okay, so we have here graph. We have here graph A, graph B, graph C, and graph D. So, we're going to use vertical line to test whether the following graphs are function. So, let's take a look at letter A. If we're going to draw a vertical line, ayan, if we're going to draw a vertical line, this vertical line intersect to one and only one point. So, this is our graph here. This is our graph this one and if we're going to draw vertical line there is only one point here that touches the graph 
So therefore, according to vertical line test, so therefore, this is a, okay, this is a function. Okay, another one, we go to letter B. We're going to try, so this now is the graph, letter B. That is a circle, diba? This is a circle. So if we're going to draw a line, vertical line, as you can see here in the graph, there is this point that intersect the graph and another point that intersect the graph. So therefore, according to vertical line test, there should be only one and only one point that intersects vertical line into the graph. So since this is, we have here two points. So therefore, this is a, not a function because it touches the graph twice. Yeah, and this one, it touches. When you're going to draw a vertical line, this one is a vertical line. This red one, this is what we call the vertical line. And it touches on this point and this point. So there are two points where in the vertical intersect the graph. So therefore, this is not a function. Okay? Can you understand? Did you, did you understand? Okay. Do you understand what I mean? Okay. So let's, let's go to the next graph, letter C. So let us draw vertical line. Okay. This is now the graph, this one here. It is inverted semicircle. So it touches the graph on this point once. Another graph, another vertical line, it touches this graph once also. And another here, and another here. So therefore, we can say that using the vertical line test, there is only one point that touches the graph. So, therefore, this is a, okay, this is a function. Now, we go to the last graph. So, we have here um, half semicircle again. So, let us try to draw vertical line. Okay, oops. So, this vertical line touches this point and this point. So as you can see here, there are two points which intersect the vertical line to the graph. Let's try another one. We have here vertical line and it touches this point and this point. So using the vertical line test, it touches the graph into touches the graph on two points. So, therefore, this is not a function. Okay, remember that using vertical line test, you can identify the graph of a function. So, I'll repeat. If the vertical line touches the graph at only one and only point, so, therefore, that is a function. But if we're going to draw a vertical line and it touches the graph into two or many points, then that is not a function. Okay, do you have any question? Okay, I hope so. I hope you, you can follow, okay? Next, functions in real life. Let's have here an example of functions in real life. We have here first scenario. June and May are in long-time relationship until June realized that he wants to marry May. Wow! June says, we're together for the last seven years and I believe that you are my forever. Will you marry me? If I said 
and May said, if I said yes, if I said yes, what could you promise me? June says, I promise to love you forever, to be faithful, loyal to you until my last breath. And then May said, answered, I love you too, and I will marry you. Okay, so this is an example of functions in real life. So June and May will become partners forever if they're, go if they're going to marry each other. Okay, so therefore, June here is faithful to May. In the same thing with May, she is also faithful to June. So that is an example of functions in real life. So we have here another example. So Kim is a natural born Filipino, but because of her eyes, many people confuse if she is Chinese. Let's see how the response to her new classmates who are asking if she is Chinese. Hey classmates! Are you a Chinese? Hey Kim, can you teach me some Chinese language? Kim, I thought you are a Chinese. No classmate, I was born Filipino and my parents were also pure Filipino. How have you said, but my, I'm sorry, I cannot read, but my veins run a pure Filipino blood. I love Chinese, but I'm sorry I can't teach you because I am Filipino. I was born Filipino and will die as a Filipino. So in this scenario, it's, it's just It's an example of functions in real life. It only shows that one person has its own nationality. Okay? So if you are a Filipino, you are Filipino. You cannot be Chinese. You only have one citizen. Okay? Okay, so this... That is an example of real life function. So, do you have any question? No more question? Okay, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed the video.